everyone, my name is Lynn McEntee. I'm the moderator today for the Youth for Change Canada's Inclusive Youth Festival. Uh, it's exciting to be here today because we're here with the youth of today and the, the, the future of our country. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you to Sunil Channon for allowing this to happen, uh, Youth for Change Canada. And I'm going to just do a little bit of uh, explanation about with, what Youth for Change is about, but also what the Inclusive Festival is about, and then hand it over to our, our young people to kind of give it a go and, and uh, raise the conversation about entrepreneurship, youth entrepreneurship in particular. So we're on day one of the Inclusive Youth Festival. This is a panel discussion today. Again, my name is Lynn McEntee, and I've been involved with uh, Youth for Change and Moksha Canada Foundation for a bit, and I'm excited to launch and uh, shine light on these wonderful guests that are here today as well. A little bit of a uh, bit about the event, um, please, and thank you. I'm just going to read uh, about it because it is very important. Inclusive Youth uh, Mosaic is what we're all about, and the Inclusive Youth uh, Mosaic is a three-day celebration of art, dance, music, theatre, and crafts uh, for youth, racialized women, immigrants, refugees, and newcomer communities. Youth for Change is in collaboration with various community groups and grassroots organizations. The online festival engages youth artists, artisans, and entrepreneurs. Uh, we have an entrepreneur here today, and her name is Nellie. Uh, we'll get a chance to introduce her in a moment, but I'm just going to go around, and perhaps we can all just introduce ourselves really quickly. Uh, again, my name is Lynn McEntee, and then we have, and top screen on the left would be Ravindu. Hi guys, uh, nice to meet you. I'm one of the hosts for today, one of the speakers. So I'll pass it on to Carlo. Hi everyone, I'm Carlo Joseph, Carlo Bianchini, and I'm one of your co-hosts for today. Very nice to be here, thankful to be here. Yeah. Pass it off to Jasenia. Yes. Hello everyone, I'm Jasenia. Very excited to be here as well and you know, engage in this conversation with you all. Pass it to Hania now. Hi everyone, my name is Hanya. I'm one of the co-hosts today and I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen today. So hopefully we'll get a lot of interesting conversations. Nice. Can we pass it off to Sunil before we head over to Nelly? And for our, our viewers and listeners today, we do have some other guests joining us as well. Nelly will help to kickstart the uh, discussion on youth entrepreneurship. Let's head over to Sunil for a moment. And Sunil is the founder of Youth for Change Hello guys, Canada. My name is and uh, thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for for the team of youth for change and uh, we are proud to bring these uh, interesting topics for all the youth so they can learn from us and and we can share our expertise and we're not the experts but whatever we know whatever experience we guys have like especially the youth they can share with the other youth so they can learn from us and follow us and you know go and do better things in their life so welcome to everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. And for our viewers and listeners, please follow us on social media, reach out. And if you have an idea for a show, anything upcoming, if you wanted to be a performer, please get involved and hit the like button on our social media, but also, also reach out if you have something you would like to contribute. Uh, we'd really look forward to hearing from you. Uh, always about engaging the community and raising the conversation and raising the bar in our conversation. So we welcome Nellie today as one of our guests. And Nellie, you mentioned that you're an artist. Um, I could go through a bio, but I thought let's go live and let's just speak to you and we'll go right into the conversation. And perhaps all the people around the panel today will have a question for you. So tell us about yourself, Nellie. And just have you on mute for a moment. Do you mind just unmuting, please? And always thank you. I'm so sorry. Everybody oh, it's thought good. I was going to in my mouth or something. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hello world. Okay, so yes, like she said, my name is Nelly, also known as Endo. So the nickname with that is the artist formerly known as Nelly Lux, but we'll laugh about that later. That's a little Prince yeah. joke because we never got it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I technically can say I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, I host, I sing, I rap, I write, I make music, I produce. Um, I do work as an independent contractor also. So I'm all about trying to find new ways to make money and, and try to grow myself. So that's one thing I would like to say to the youths listening in today. Always push yourself, never stop. Um, I don't know if you want me to say a little more about myself. I've been doing this since I was young, but I haven't really taken it seriously until the later years of my life. One of the reasons is we don't know sad stories or anything, but you, I never really had a good foundation to really get that 
confidence and strength from. So it took a long time for me to be able to learn how to do that. So, I mean, that's like a whole other issue. You can bring up mental health issues and all that stuff with that, but I'm hoping not to get that deep too fast. Um, you know, no, that's interesting. That's, a, that's very topical too, right? And that's okay to be talking about that because that's really current uh, today in all of our lives. It's in the forefront yeah. of everything. And I know certainly I mean, myself, I've worked in approach, education yeah. and talk. Uh, an artist in the artist field as well. It's in the forefront of everything we do as a human being, right? So yeah, always uh, feel free to share and discuss as needed. Oh yeah, yeah. Confidence is something that's really that you need to have if you're going to try to build your own business, no matter what it is, right? So whether it be singing or if you're going to try to build like a clothing line or I want to try to do like a construct a construction agency, no matter what, confidence is key. If I walk in and I look like I'm scared of doing what I'm doing, then nobody's going to really want to work with you, right? So definitely, yeah, that's that's something that I had to rise up with. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool, Nelly. So like, what has your experience been like as an independent contractor so far? Like, how, what have you been experiencing? What kind of contracts have you had? How are you finding I mean, Okay, I do find that like certain things are easier to do if you're a guy than a girl, because like some jobs are more like male oriented. So that part, I mean, if you really want me to be blunt with it, that's, that's one of the things I find, but like the job itself, it's, it's, it's lovely to be your own boss and to be in control. So all of those aspects I love. And as a woman, I wouldn't say, don't try to do it just because there's that whole demographic or anything, right. but um, I don't know. I could say like, I like, I like the opportunities it leads to. You can be your own person, be your own boss, learn your own trades, expand, do your own thing, add on to more fields if you want to. So that part's beautiful. But like I said, to be taken seriously, it's, it, we're coming a long way before the equalization is there. Right. Very cool. And you also mentioned music production as well, correct? Yeah, I do beats. I make music. I um, have performed. I've done hosting for certain events. Um, for local artists and, and also online as well. So that's been great. Um, if you guys ever want to check it out, it's at endo underscore Nelly Lutz at Instagram. Nice. So you can find out more there. Personal ads, yes. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> Definitely get those in there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you have, to, you have to get that promotion on. That's all about marketing yourself too. Right. And it goes into a whole exactly. other right? See, we're giving out free entrepreneur skips. That's entrepreneur mm -hmm. tip 101. Always be selling. <laughs> Number one sales point. There you go. Absolutely. Right. You yeah. can make this fun and educational. So there we go. Nelly, how did you really, um, how did you begin your journey? Was there like a certain instance that inspired you or was it something that kind of a build up throughout the years and then you wanted to put your passion into life or how did you really begin? I always like to do, I always like to, I always like entertainment, music, acting, all of that. And I like to do things that are hands-on. So the combination of the two kind of helped out so when you're doing production you get to do a lot of hands-on stuff you get to work with wires you get to build speakers all of that crazy stuff when you're working with music it allows you to be creative show your wild side your fun side your sad side whatever you really want to try to like let out it's kind of therapeutic that way right see you get it I see you smiling you understand <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get it and so like what kind of what kind of music have you been you know getting into like what would you say your music is like your style I like r and hip hop. I do like dance hall. I'm getting more into dance hall, but right now it's mainly been r and soul type music and hip hop. So yeah. how do you go about marketing that kind of music? How do you go about, like, do you post it? Do you use social media? Do you have TikTok? Social you know, media, yeah. promotions, ads, get yourself a team, like an AR or something. If you're just starting out by yourself, try to sign up for local shows because there's a lot of promoters out there. The only problem is like, Unless you know who it is, most people don't know where to find it, right? right? It's not like they're the ones who are posting the promotions on Facebook or on Instagram, unfortunately. I have a question. What's, uh, what uh, best marketing strategies do you recommend um, to promote yourself? Market yourself. I mean, yeah, word of mouth works very well, too. Like, if you're if you're out, you're mingling, you're, you're so showing off yourself and, like, getting, getting people to follow you live, I feel like you get a stronger fan base um but like promotions and stuff like that help you to get it more shown more w on a wide basis so if you want to try to get a vast audience quickly then promotions such as instagram promotions facebook promotions all of that kind of stuff will help push towards that but if you want to 
try to get that strong foundation, then you're going to have to intermingle with their fan base too. give them videos, go, go to concerts, um, even do like live performances at Dundas Square. Why not? Like the, the liver, the better, because people want to feel like they know you. So the better the closer you can go with your audience, the better it is. Same with uh, businesses. That's why they like transparency, right? I have a question too for you, Nelly. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, Lynn. I cut no, you off there. No, no, no. Uh, so out of all this, the ways that you market yourself, which which strategy have you seen uh, most results with? Okay. I feel like that's like a net and gross question. Only yeah. because like only because like okay, just like I said before, when I when I have people that I've I've met, I feel like they're on it longer. And if I'm putting out if I'm doing for like the vast audience, I'd have to be putting out content more more rapidly. You know what I mean? Like I'd have to always stay on point. Because if you're not if you're not on point enough, then they lose interest. But the fans who really care or want to see that growth. Are the ones who are going to stick around. So if I want, if, I, if we're talking something like on a on a minute scale, like I'm just judging right there and then, I'd say promotions all the way like Facebook, all that stuff. Send out as much ads as you can. But if you want to get that core base, you want to see it grow and get more re, like revenue from it, then definitely the face to face is better. Amazing. Um, go yeah. ahead, Lynn. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Nolly. Could you walk us back actually, and when you actually. Um, called yourself an entrepreneur when did you actually say okay this is feeling like I'm an entrepreneur here and I've got uh, my business number girl <laughs> okay nice, nice. <laughs> absolutely the business uh, number there we go right? there we go it's legit baby. it's official <laughs> I love it I love it mind you so I'm gonna do like other steps too to be able to like get all your streams and you got to know where you're getting your money from. So you know where to register your song so that you can re like, you know, whatever your product is, you got to know where your stream's coming from to be able to get that revenue in. But yeah, mm -hmm. but that made me feel official. That made me feel like I could finally enter the boardroom. <laughs> oh, very nice. Absolutely. And you've earned your, your right at the table, right? As Thank, you my Thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask before we open the floor to others as well too? Like, so yes, you're a living, breathing entrepreneur, but you've got all these skills that you brought to the table. How did you decide like, okay, these are the prongs I want to focus on. Like you might have five things in the fire, you know, or there's I mean, two. I haven't actually decided yet. I'm still looking for more things to do. I think that's one of the best things about being an entrepreneur. You're like a little kid in that aspect. You always want to learn and always want to grow. And if you're not thinking like that, then you might just be a business owner. I don't know. <laughs> like one-stop shop <laughs> type thing. But I feel like you, if you want to grow, you got to always keep learning your craft and keep learning new things. And if the businesses are always evolving and growing, no matter what it is, whether it's music, whether it's again carpentry, whatever it, what may, what may have you, it's always evolving. It's always new tools, new skills, new materials. So you always got to be learning. You always got to learn new things and do new things. And that also branches out to new opportunities. So, yeah, I don't think yeah. there's ever like a donezo part. There's it's a forever going. Awesome. We're learning everything, ready, like the ginger men. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, plus, like we were talking before we went live, it's morphing as you go. Like it really is. And for I, for myself, I look at all of our guests here today, and I think, wow, how wonderful for me to have this opportunity to be here with you. I'm learning and growing along the way, and we kind of morph and learn and carry that with us. I might carry a little bit of Nelly, a little bit of Carlo, a little bit of Katie, who's just arrived, and Anya, and just Sanya and Ravindu. And to me, that's just magic. That is so magical. Um, exactly. To keep yourself open to that, right? Um, that's cool. I think questions I think people might have for you at this moment. Yeah, um, I'll ask another question. I know we did a podcast a while ago. We we're talking about you know, the, the different types of social media. And we talked about, you know, really for music and artists, there's a lot of, you know, place in TikTok, right? Do you use TikTok to put your music out and create? Do you create your songs to make it like more like, you know, dance viral or like what do you what's your thought on that? I mean, my songs are mainly made based on my mood. I don't really try to go for a, all the hype and everything, but yeah. I'm not going to lie. There are some certain fads where I'm like, no, I should make a one like this. I get everybody going off too. Cause 100%. It's, when it gets enticing like that, everybody wants, everybody wants to be that bad. So of course yeah. I want to make one, but TikTok's not my go-to. I still like, I still like advertising what I do more than a boomerang right. picture. Right. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's, that's fair. fair. Yeah, I think everybody yeah. has their own taste, right? Yeah. 
And some businesses work better on different platforms, right? Like that Facebook, that Instagram platform, some businesses just work better for that, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm sure Katie Martin from Beyond Melodies, who's here right now, can tell you that, you know, TikTok is a really great platform to use for her business, right? What do you think? Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're kind of new to the TikTok world, but, you know, once you blow up, you blow up a little bit. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, Yeah, I've recently seen some of your videos that have been getting a lot of traction too, right? Yeah. It's it's all about hopping on that trade. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the world of TikTok. Huge. Yeah, it's I think it's crazy, especially, you know, being a, a young entrepreneur nowadays, it doesn't matter what type of field you're in, you got to use these social medias for your advantage, right? It's, it's great to see that you guys are both using, you know, TikTok and Instagram to really take advantage of that and, you know, make your craft better. Mm-hmm. Right. And no. I just have a question no, no. Um, based on that. So obviously, you know, depending on what sector you're in, what field you're in, you're going to use different social medias to leverage um, whatever your, your craft is, but how do you guys feel that you differentiate yourself, for example, amidst all the crowd? Because there's so much yeah. in these days. That's a great question. Before you insert, Sorry, Katie, question. Anybody, <laughs> is, anybody that's just listening and tuning in now, uh, Katie is representing Beyond Melodies. Um, yeah, yeah. So thank yeah. you, Katie, for being as well. And Nellie will jump back to you at some point as well and uh, go for it. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm I'm Katie. I'm one of the co-founders of Beyond Melodies Co., where we serve to bring joy and music uh, to people in care facilities. So that includes retirement homes, hospitals, long-term care homes, and honestly, everywhere in between rehab facilities, group homes, everything you can think of. Um, and we basically travel to them and perform for them. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Um, Inspiring. Yeah. It's been really awesome. We've just started almost a year ago uh, amidst the pandemic. (laughs) We really noticed, you know, a need for those folks in isolation Mm -hmm. and, you know, putting them even further into isolation during the pandemic. We noticed, you know, they weren't even seeing their loved ones, their family, their friends. And that, that, entertainment was missing you know so we filled we were aiming to fill that gap and provide entertainment and also just connection to these folks because even just asking them their name giving them eye contact giving them that you know physical interaction the social yeah. interaction yes of course yeah. of course that, that's great because uh, one of the things about you know older folks is they love to have conversations right and uh, unfortunately a lot of you know younger people they don't take that and you know have a big conversation so I want to ask you um while doing that what type of uh like feedback have you been getting from them are they like really excited like what do they say oh it's incredible the feedback because you know we our goal is to make it as interactive as possible. We want to get to know these folks. We ask for song requests. You know, we have a repertoire of over 300 songs that songs that our group performs usually from the golden oldies. So we really get to connect with them of, Oh, why, why do you like this song so much? What kind of memories um, do these songs bring back? Um, And, you know, we hear just the most incredible stories of, you know, their pasts and their families and their lives and it's just beautiful and you know we've gotten so much positive feedback from not only the residents but the residents family and the staff and just saying like you know these people hardly ever get out of their room and it was just you completely uplifted their spirits which always just makes us so happy because it's so fulfilling for us but to know that we made a positive impact on them is just the best feeling yeah it's that's crazy that's really great to hear that's super inspiring. Yeah. I mean, you must get a, a ton of song requests from a whole bunch <laughs> yes. of time, right? Yeah. So do, Absolutely. You, do you guys only do Toronto or where do you guys, where are you guys off based off of? Yeah. So we're, all of us are uh, living in Toronto at the moment. Okay. However, during the pandemic, because it was, we were going virtual, mm-hmm. we were able to connect to folks all across Canada on a virtual platform. So we sang to people in BC and Alberta and Nova Scotia. Like it was amazing to just get to meet all these people. Um, However, 
in person performances, we are primarily in Toronto. However, we do travel to like the GTA. So we performed in Hamilton and Mississauga and all those places as well. Amazing. And our goal is to one day, you know, get to do a tour or something. <laughs> that would be really fun. A global That's... tour. Yes. Right. Yes. That would be the dream. I, I, there's definitely I think what you guys are doing is amazing there's definitely a big marker for that and if it makes them feel like you know they're not alone and there's people singing there and that's great to hear and Katie I'm yeah. going to jump in briefly I've been booked for the end of the month I do a Victorian caroling group similar situation and it's our first booking since 2019 and we're going at the end of the month and everybody's just so thrilled to do what you're talking about it's just to be able to look out into the crowd to lift each other up uh, to be there in a moment in time with each other, uh, that intergenerational learning. So I'm actually um, invigorated just by hearing you talk about it. Um, so thank you for sharing yes. those experiences. Yeah. That's honestly amazing oh. that like any, any type of live entertainment for these folks is so important, whether it be caroling or whatnot, just because it's so inaccessible, like in the public setting, like so many people can't even, you know, leave their beds, let alone go to a theater, mm -hmm. go to a concert. So with our, you know, troupe, we're able to go into common areas, go into rooms and offer them this live entertainment that they don't really get often. So that's awesome. Amazing. It does put you your mental health balance as well for you as a performer. We kind of just briefly mentioned that with Nelly and um, uh, for as an artist, um, do you find that that's really helping you to keep yourself uh, focused, actually, whereas others may be struggling with that right now? Yeah. Working on music and stuff? Sorry, I missed the question. I fall deep into the stories and I missed the question. Say it oh, again. That's good. So this is for <laughs> Katie. Uh, but also Nelly, but uh, Katie, I guess, uh, in terms of going into a senior's home, going into that type of setting, um, does it uplift you as a performer? And do you find that that helps with your own mental health balance um, and progression? Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. You know, performing already just fills you with so much joy, but to be able to be so close to these people people and get to see them like their sparkle in their eye their smiles like it's it you can't even describe it it's such a yeah. beautiful feeling truly crazy awesome. i also have and, a question yeah, great for my mental oh. health <laughs> Sorry <about that. laughs> i also have a question of if someone wanted to book you guys right maybe watching this video how would they reach you or contact you is there like a website how do you guys do that She liked out. Absolutely. I um, encourage anyone watching. If, can you hear me? There we go. We're good. Okay, there we yeah. go. Yeah, you kind of liked out there for a bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, yes, no, I encourage anyone watching if and or a family member in a care facility or just in isolation, please reach out to us. Um, we try to be accessible as possible. You can reach us on our website, mm -hmm. and that is www.beyondmelodies.com. And you can also reach us. We have a Facebook, Beyond Melodies Co. We have an Instagram with the same name and a TikTok. And an email, beyondmelodiesco at gmail.com. <laughs> Amazing. Lovely. Thank you, Katie. That's excellent. Yeah. How many Katie, like, shows and performances do you say you guys, do you think you guys typically do within a week? Like, do you, are you guys always constantly booked up? Like, what's that kind of like? Yeah. It honestly varies. Like sometimes we have weeks where we have like four or five bookings, like, and it's just blowing up. And then, you know, sometimes we only have a, a month or whatever. So it varies. It's definitely filling up on Christmas because those yeah. Christmas songs, the Christmas yeah. entertainment. Right. Um, ask, so it like, totally varies. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Very interesting. Mm -hmm um and in terms of like advertisements and stuff like how do you find you guys are you doing any advertisements right now is it basically just on on social media like what kind of tools are you or using word of mouth i think that's a big thing too right yeah we were talking about word of mouth earlier with nelly and how powerful that can be and even just like other people seeing you perform and like giving mm -hmm. references to other people about hey this group is really great you should have them come down here and do something for you right what are you yeah, finding yeah honestly all of the above like we reach out to 
you know, the, at the very beginning, we literally did cold calls, cold calls. We called like 500 facilities across Canada and we are just like, hey, we're beyond melodies. We want to entertain your folks. Like, like let us sing and just that kept the ball rolling and so and so would talk to from another home you need to book them you need to book them and then you know we're just spread which is exciting we're still you know every now and then we still do a a cold call like week or whatever just to get some more clients but oftentimes when one home books us because we have such a large repertoire we can make every performance unique every performance different so sometimes you know month and it's awesome so yeah it's it's all all of the above social media and word of mouth <laughs> that's great i want to talk about that a little bit because um i actually went into entrepreneurship too when i was 18 and i also did a lot of cold call and i know cold call is a lot hard and there's a lot of failure and a lot of no's and you know it does get emotional sometimes so how did you guys deal with that aspect of cold calling because it is a hard thing Yeah, yeah, sometimes it can be discouraging. It is hundred percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. it can be we did a, a whole podcast on it about cold. <laughs> I feel like that one time. Or like, you know, yeah, I would we you know we would call and sometimes I would spend two hours and just get voicemail after voicemail after voicemail and I was like, okay, are these yeah. going anywhere? But then you know, the next day I would get a phone call and they would book us, which is it- awesome. So, definitely discouraging for the most part they weren't no one was like rude or just I know that you sorry go on long term (laughs) retirement school but I know since Christmas is coming that uh, like are you gonna like is Beyond Melody is gonna be in any of the malls in uh, GTA sometime like Bramley Square One Eden Center any of these places are you looking to expand (laughs) (laughs) why not honestly we don't have anything booked like that as of now but that would be super cool we would definitely be up for that again we love performing anywhere in any circumstance to anyone who needs it so that would be super fun we should look into that (laughs) yeah 100 i want to go back onto that cold calling because i feel like a lot of young entrepreneurs and a lot of people that are going into business that's like the number one way that they're going to get started right is with the cold cold calling and really getting into that field so i you can answer to nelly if you have experienced that but how do you guys deal with the nose right and how does how do you motivate yourself during those times Ooh, that's a good question um <laughs> you know we i we always try our best to like Even if they say no, we try to, you know, oh, if it's something financial, like we can get a donation for you or like you can come to a free performance. Like, you know, we try as much as we can just to change that no into a maybe. (laughs) (laughs) To a a yes, hopefully, right? (laughs) Yes. And again, obviously without being pushy, but, um, you know, again, most of these, most of the time they are quite, quite friendly I mean, 75% of the chance time we just get a voicemail, (laughs) which is, you know, discouraging, but you know, those times that we do get to actually talk to the staff, they are usually really excited about it. So that's always a a plus. (laughs) That's great. This is a little different. I mean, I I like that too. Um, I'm more of a believer is like, I used to do door to door sales and stuff like that. So our whole thing was you get like 250 doors, you might get 150 no's and then you might get a 50 yeses. So keep pushing until you get it. And Mm -hmm. also kind of like what she says, just when you're talking to people, just be relatable. Let people understand where you're coming from, what you're doing. The more they relate to you, the more they're maybe willing to accept what you're doing too. So it goes both ways. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. I think, I think especially in that type of, you know, cold calling, cold cold business you got to remember the rule of um 80 20 rule i don't know if you guys have heard of that or experienced what it is yes, but preach it, preach it, preach it. yeah so i think that's the main thing right even if you get those no's i always like to think of my a no as like you know not yet so maybe in the future you know mm-hmm. if, if you become big they might you know want to want you to do a show right so that's something to think when you get a no 
That's very positive. Very yeah. positive. Turn <laughs> it around, right? Absolutely. Exactly. It's a way to say yes, actually. So next year on the Inclusive Festival, you could both participate, actually, because it would be live. So there's an opportunity for you right there. Start thinking about that. Um, yeah. You know? but I think also, I appreciate you on our social media. Uh, it's a great opportunity to cross-promote. Uh, we would love to do that for you. Yeah. Thank you so That's much. Great. Yeah, cross yeah, promotion in itself is just such an like a, such a great tool to use, right? In terms of just like musicians helping musicians, performers helping performers, right? Like even if it's two totally separate things, the group that listens to the both of you might actually have something in common, right? Or a friend might see this and share it, and that's just kind of a way to like grow and expand your own social media, which is awesome, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, that, that cold call conversation, cold calls can be so intimidating, right? It is. Um, Katie, I wanted to ask you how many performers are in total does Beyond Melodies have? Yeah. So it's the six of us. Uh, it's myself, uh, performer Elise Wilson, Megan Dallin, Noah Beamer, Tebra Plamondon, and Liam Krober Best. And yes, we are all six of us kind of doing everything. You know, we do all the admin side of things and we also do the performances. And, you know, as our company grows, of course, we want to expand, get some more performers in there. Um, but yeah, it's the six of us as of now. Great. Yeah. Are you multi instrumentalists or do you play more than one instrument? Um, do you all? Yes. Yes. So um, we primarily, because we are traveling, it's you, sometimes you know you're going from room to room to room. You can't exactly bring a huge uh, <laughs> instrument, to, but we primarily use guitar and ukulele and, you know, a cappella vocal arrangements. Um, if we're doing, you know, online or if it's in a certain setting, um, we can use piano, which is fun. Um, and, you know, little like shakers and kazoos and, and all that. to add on this that definitely gives me pitch pitch perfect vibes exactly hey, that's perfect <laughs> our jam <laughs> yeah I'm having that, that's the kind of image that's coming into my mind when you're saying that definitely oh, yeah. well we do a lot of acapella like just c- because all six of us have so much now experience doing harmonies on the spot because again if someone requests it and one of us kind of knows it we're like okay let's sing this and like try to lay our harmonies we've gotten really good at kind of blending and working as a team to make it sound as best as best as we can so yeah voices are definitely number one but we use ukulele and guitar most of the time that's fantastic yeah and you kind of have like a, a few set musicians to kind of handle those instruments and everything yeah, yeah. Um, myself, Elise, and Noah can all play ukulele. Okay. And Liam's our guitar man, and and uh, Megan actually is learning too. So okay. we have a couple, cool. a couple instrumentalists. That's <laughs> yeah. great. It's nice. And you um, must have like a hundred or so or more songs in your roster, kind of like ready to go at all times, right? Yes. Wow. We, we have a lot of me. <laughs> I can imagine. Like, which is awesome because. There's so many, there's so many amazing songs. So we always love learning new material. And, you know, we always, if we go to a facility more than once, we always try to bring back something that the clients really liked. Like if they really liked Elvis, we'll, we'll learn a few more Elvis tunes or what, what we want. We try to learn more of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. You get like requests from them beforehand, or do you just kind of like see what the vibe is and like what they like and try and make it from there? Most of the time we, we get requests when we're there. I mean, the odd time, like a, if a staff is really engaged with their residents, they'll be like, oh, Dorothy really loves, you know, Simon and Garfunkel or something. Right. So right. we try to best prepare, but, you know, oftentimes it's on the fly or usually we have, we have so many songs that if they request something, we usually know a tune or two from them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to ask one thing from both of you guys. I know um, we ha- we talked about this in our in our podcast uh, a few weeks ago. Um, when going into like business and entrepreneurship, sometimes you had to do work for free, right? And did you guys both? Because I know I had to do this a little bit. Did you guys do your work for free in the beginning just to kind of promote yourself and create some videos and marketing? No, oh. I want to take one first. Or- and then we can switch it up a bit. Yeah. I think yeah. Katie, how long do we have you for? We have a, Sorry. Do we have you five more minutes? Or? 
we have a little yeah, more go- time here. Oh, totally. No, no, okay, no. Okay, great. I'm- just whenever you need to go, just let us know. <laughs> yeah, this is not something kind of go with her. Yeah. Nelly, what do you oh, think about that? Great. The no rush. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, so in, uh, in terms, oh my goodness, I forget the question now. What were you talking about? <laughs> so my question was, uh, did you guys had to do, you know, like your work for free in the beginning just to kind of like promote yourself and, and to get yourself out there? Yes, right. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm having a blank. Um, yes, absolutely. We're still doing work for free. <laughs> it's most of it's most of the business side of things. Yeah. So like usually between sponsors and donors and the facilities paying us for our actual performances. I mean, sometimes we perform at a discounted price, obviously. Um, but because we've gotten now donors and sponsors to fill those gaps for the homes that you know have some financial constraints where we usually always get paid properly for those performances however the business side of things you know the emails the scheduling the social media all that stuff you know it's we we all kind of do it for free but we love we love our company so hopefully one day is we get more money and we, we can pay for all that side of stuff. <laughs> right, right. And nobody counts those hours, right? Where you're doing all those emails, you're doing those promotional videos for your social media. Right. But it, it's kind of like you said, like you have that positive side of things where you're hanging out with people who you really vibe with, right. As a, as a group. And so that makes it kind of all the worthwhile. Nelly, what's your experience in, in that? Same thing. If you want to get yourself out there, you got to start by first, um, Okay, I'll make sure I'm not, not muted. You got to make sure first that people get to see you, right? You can't have a business without a product. So nobody knows what the product is if they don't see it. So your number one is just getting out there, letting people know who you are. And sometimes if you do, it's word of mouth, right? So like um, if you do services for free, it makes more people see what your value is. And the more people will appreciate you, more people will talk about you. So work means growth. Regardless. 100%. Uh, do you mind if I uh, ask uh, Nelly? Uh, th- sorry about that, Ravindu. Do you mind no if I ask Nelly? Thank you so much. Um, um, yeah, when you, how did you make that decision then? Uh, what, can you give us an example of where you would have done that? Uh, if you don't mind, please, and thank you for maybe somebody who's not familiar with that process. Mm-hmm. So you've done something uh, sort of pro bono kind of thing, right? You've, you've offered your service for free, but maybe you've cross-promoted the other person or the other group or whichever. Uh, so it's a win-win, right? Are you asking me? Yeah, Sorry, my I, volume, yeah, my little... volume went really bad. That's I okay. can't fix it. And everybody is really low. So if I <laughs> look like I'm dying, it's because I can't hear very well. Oh, so, yeah. So, so I'll just can we repeat the question one more time? I'll try again. Absolutely. And I really wanted to give you a platform to be able to share it. So that's why I'm kind of going back at it again. Um, when you first uh, were able to do that, when you realized that you could offer us your service and you decided to do, okay, I'm going to do this for free, uh, but you know, it's going to pay off later down the road. Uh, can you give us an example where you would have done that or an org you might've worked um, with or a person? Yeah, I, I guess like the first time I, I started hosting for local events, that would have been one of the first times. I Honestly, to tell the truth, when I first started doing it, it was just to help someone out and I wasn't yeah. expecting to start getting paid from it. So that was kind of beautiful. That was just like, Oh, so by the way, I am, I'm a professional at this now. I got paid for this. So <laughs> nice. let me push myself in that direction. That. So yeah, <laughs> that's, I think taking the first steps is always what helps because then you never know what your worth is until you start. It, so oh, beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. And I think I just kind of add on to, I think being in an entrepreneur or like a business owner, you got to remember the first couple of years is all going to be about hustle, right? It's like, nobody's going to pay you, but it's, it's in those years that, you really break it or make it because I think it's about, you know, 90% of people that go into business, they do struggle and they do fail. But if you stick to it and, you know, push yourself, you do make it. Right. Mm-hmm. Setting yourself self up for the long term, for the future. 100%. That's a great I had a point. question for you guys actually as well. Um, I was wondering, so do you have a one piece of advice that maybe you've learned or that you carry with you always that you would give to a youth entrepreneur who was interested in starting their own business? No, that's a great one. Yeah. Keep pushing, don't take no for an answer and don't let other people's doubts cloud your judgment either. One of the reasons I didn't do what I wanted to do for a long time is because a lot of people who have tried things I've wanted to do before failed in that aspect. So I was like, okay, if you fail, then I'm a fail because you guys are close to me. We have like the similar, you know, personality, attributes, whatever. No, 
dash that thought away because that's the one thing that holds people back the most to tell the truth okay i don't want to say this to start any family disputes but it is scientifically proven that one of the biggest things holding us back from pursuing our goals is our faults of our parents because they didn't make it and they taught us that we can only do things a certain way we kind of bring our mindset to that and i'm not saying go and like completely disobey your parents if they say they say don't smoke cigarettes don't smoke my dang cigarettes but <laughs> but sometimes you got to follow your own path to find out what's really going to be good for you and what's going to work for you so do you yeah no, i totally agree mm-hmm. yeah, and and just that you know you're capable than more than you think like if you surround yourself with like-minded people if you get a team that you know is as devoted to this company as you are like you are on the right track and you know I never would have thought I would start my own business with five of my colleagues but here I am and I'm so happy and yeah you're capable than more than you you're ca- more capable than you think you are. <laughs> That's great. I love that one. Yeah, I think self doubt is always the number one thing that holds us back. You know, hundred um, percent. Yeah, I have a, another question. Um, if it's a sensitive issue, you guys don't need to answer. But I know one of the things about being in business is that you do get a lot of you know friends and family that say, "Oh, is that the right path you should take?" Have you guys experienced that in in your careers and in your own businesses? That's a good one. Mm. oh goodness um yeah. i think she cut out just kidding i think all performers you'll dive into um am i good yeah you're good now good. oh you're not good okay <laughs> <laughs> i think all of them. <laughs> do you want to hear nelly first Hello? Maybe... Oh, okay okay you're good now Sorry, I guess my Wi-Fi is unstable. Um, no, just, uh, yeah, I think all entertainers, all musicians, all artists go through that in a way, like being told, you know, this isn't an actual career, you know, maybe yeah. do something more serious, more stable. But, you know, my honestly, my fa- family and friends have been so supportive of this and, I'm so lucky to have such a, you know, a team of supporters. Um, but for sure, you know, you go through that all the time as an artist. That's great to hear. Mm-hmm. What about you, Nelly? You're muted. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, sorry. Was that a question? I told you my volume was like, uh... yeah. Like you guys said, I swear you're saying her name when you're saying my name, and because I can only read lips, I swear I think you're saying my name half the time. Um. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Let's try this again. Ravin, you just want to repeat your question? Okay, yeah, sure. So my question was, um, have you experienced any, you know, people that are your friends and family when you went into the business that you were in? Did they say, oh, you know, don't do that maybe take a change go no family is the last person to help you i'm sorry they always <laughs> act like they're your go-to and your number one but no <laughs> they're the first people like really that's 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 what you're gonna do with that money you didn't think maybe you want to invest it in my car after you drive it you know what i mean like that's always how it goes it's usually strangers and like friends but like they can't be that too too close too because i don't know yeah too too close but like they family they act the same way <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Nelly, I think all of us have a story like that, right? I think there's always 100%. something. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah, for sure. Breaking new ground, right? Stepping outside the box. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'll ask you guys um, another question for both of you, because you guys are both artists. Uh, for p- people that are watching that are in music in university or high school or, you know, w- practice music, and they eventually want to maybe become an artist or create a band, what do you guys say to them great question we can start with katie oh, sorry oh, yeah. <laughs> my niece came <laughs> <laughs> no go for it just just chase those dreams you know you're you're gonna regret it if you don't go for it so just just do what makes you happy and if you want to make a band if you want to pursue musical theater <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So you're going to regret it. No, you might as well try. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and making other people happy in the process of doing so too, right? Who are going to enjoy those performances. And who are yeah. Gonna, I'm sure, you know, there are many people reaping the benefits of that right now within all the programs that you guys do at Beyond mm-hmm. the Lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a comment I, to add in there. When you mentioned that, if, that when you say you're an artist and there's not many uh, people that support in there, it's the same thing that I see, like as uh, yeah. like for someone okay. who's like new in this, like it's like when you're an artist, it's like it's not the same thing as compared to someone who's going into law or going into some other field. It's like if you're an artist, you have uh, your own challenge in a way because mm-hmm. it's like people sometimes say, "What do you want to do exactly if you're an artist?" Right? So that's a question I think that as yeah. artists, like we often get. That's a great point, Hanya. And it's, it's, you know, artists and entrepreneurs, they're so closely related in that sense where, you know, there's this level of risk that's involved, right? And it's, it's seen by, you know, some people, some families, maybe some parents, right? Your guardians in, a, in, in sometimes a negative way because you are taking that risk, right? But it's like he said, you know, you're going to regret it if you don't take that risk and kind of go into something that you really enjoy doing. And if you put your all into it, a majority of the time it is going to pay off, right? Nelly, 100%. What, what do you think about that? Mm-hmm. see you clapping <laughs> i think nelly's niece is here that's, that's why she's muted i right. think <laughs> <laughs> uh, katie what did you take at school then if you don't mind sharing with our audience um our yeah. school, and then we'll go to no, ab- yeah. absolutely um i went to school for musical theater uh with mm-hmm. carlo actually we were in the same year at sheridan right. college yeah nice excellent nice. Yeah, no. Um, so you just always knew that's something you wanted to do. Okay, please don't do that yet. Yeah, it's it's I funny. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. There you go. You good? <laughs> it's funny. It's um, you know, I grew up in a really small town, northern Alberta. We had one local Alberta. Community. Yeah, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> one Everybody's small, in Alberta. small, <laughs> small a Grand Prairie, northern. Okay. Alberta. Yeah, so one small community theater, and my parents always called me a drama queen when I was really <laughs> little. <laughs> yeah, nice. And you know, I did. I think my first play was like in grade one or something. I <laughs> this is actually a funny story. I it was a Christmas pantomime, and they were doing We Three Kings, and they of course cast three boys as the kings. <laughs> oh, like. I'm better than these boys like I want to be one of the kings and I got a role and I got a picture in the paper so (laughs) from that moment on I knew I wanted (laughs) thank you that's amazing breaking new ground um yeah, it's a little I bit went lagging. to some programs in the state and oh, wait. You're, you're good now. You're, you're good, good now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> no, I, I kind of expanded. I, I went, did a couple programs in the States and just in the bigger cities for musical theater, just because it was so not a thing where I grew up. And sure. yeah, I auditioned for Sheridan and got in and I was so excited. <laughs> That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. What about you, Nelly? Uh, what did you uh, pursue in the education field to help you out in your artistry? Yeah. I don't know if she can hear. Can you hear me okay, Nelly? Yeah. Is that my name? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's all yeah, good. I'm, I'm paying and I'm here. I'm attention. I'm attentive. Awesome. No, and you have um, company as well too, so that's all good. And she's little, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, she's good now. She got some. She got some snacks. <laughs> oh. Um, Nelly, what did you pursue in terms of education to help you out for you as an artist? Um, maybe you took something completely different. Um, can you share with us? Education for an artist. Yeah, such as yeah. myself before, church was the oh, first one church very because you know like how most of us are raised off of the choir and stuff so my yeah. sweet escape from church and not having to listen to the preacher for what was supposed to be two hours that turned into like five <laughs> <laughs> we got to go sing in the choir not I mean, blaspheming the church or nothing like that but i'm not gonna lie those sermons were way too long <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah that was like my first experience and then as far as like Rapping and hip hop goes. That didn't happen until like maybe my high school years, and everybody showed me who Papoose was. Yeah, Slick Rick and all the rest of those guys from back in the day too, obviously. But like, 
I think it was more Papoose that made me want to start rapping just because he did this one alphabet rhyme that was beautiful and it was just he used every letter in the alphabet and made like a line for line and I was just like what it was wonderful then like there's other guys like Julio who have Gangster's Paradise and it just inflects feeling and that's another reason why I like them so I mean yeah there's a lot of inspiration from a lot of different areas I guess when I really look at it got different aspects of life created it created me voila yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. you have a rhyme (laughs) <laughs> right you're here <laughs> that's awesome um uh, mentorship or anything like that uh katie in terms of a, a a teacher uh or even a colleague um another student who just really thought you know what i like what they're doing and i i, I kind of would like a piece of that i'd like to share that and learn from them uh, anyone you can think of that sort of nodded you in oh, a certain uh, direction keep practicing keep looking for different Absolutely. programs that help with your field i guess mm. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, like, even in Toronto, we have like the sketch program, which helps a lot of can, uh, a lot of teenagers who like to do music as well, and they have produ- productions, um, production classes in a studio over there that you can use to help hone in on your craft and get yourself started. So I mean, there's a lot of avenues that can get you where you want to go. If you want to do boxing? There's a new girls club. <laughs> They're great for that. That's where I learned how to box. It got a lot of anger out. <laughs> so I mean that there's a lot of different things and I mean you never know which skills can be transferable if I was to go into acting I could definitely use that that boxing today so yeah should have done acting too (laughs) amazing yeah no for sure lifelong learning right I have a Uh, question are you talking about sketch Toronto by any chance the organization that often uh does like music development programs um I didn't do a music development program I wanted to do like I wanted to do sketch, but then by the time I found out about, like, I wanted something like sketch when I was younger, but when I found out about it, it was just like, I was already into other things. I didn't need it anymore. But for other people who do want to start, that would be great. I did go to Tribus though. Shout out to Tribus. Say, Drake, I know you went there too. Champagne Poppy, Uh, great minds. (laughs) So um, yeah, I mean, that's another avenue. There's also, I don't think I should name my competing school just because I can't remember their name right now, but um, (laughs) yeah <laughs> there's a lot of different avenues if you want to do like film or anything like that there's also the toronto film school i mean most of it you can self-learn because i mean a lot of it comes from word of mouth and i've seen a lot of people do better who haven't gone to school than who have so i'm not saying a school is a final forte for anyone because some people need it some people don't some people do good without it and some people just thought it kind of like stunts your your creativity so whatever again whatever path works for you if you find that there's a niche that works for you practice it hone on hone on to it and keep making it like until you master it pretty much if not then yeah get the like even for a person myself like my education is totally different from what i do right now so i can relate to you on that (laughs) see i'm relatable i like that (laughs) i think there are so many people who can relate to that right there's so many people who can relate to you know they studied something different you know went into something completely different it happens all the time and Mm -hmm. it's it you made a really good point nelly where it's like you can kind of you know, go back and do things if you need to. It's not something you need to jump into right away. If you do want to go that route, it's always available for you, right? Because I think a lot of people tend to think like, you know, once they reach a certain age, they can't go back to school or pursue something totally. Remember that. No, but there's always time to start over and like, you know. If anyone ever tells you that they, sorry for interrupting, but I feel like if anyone ever says that they feel too old for any of that stuff, they should think like Morgan Freeman or the rest of them. Samuel L. Jackson didn't get his start till he was 40. Morgan Freeman was the same. Even look at, um, what's his name? What's his name? The guy with the floor rider. Floor rider was 42. Like if these guys could do it, why yeah. can't you? Like, yeah. I, I feel awesome. like nobody should ever define what you can do, when you can do it or how long. Ageism is still a thing and I think people need to stop that too. Nelly, you need to post that as a TikTok right now. Absolutely. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Got fiery. Absolutely. I guarantee. I guarantee. <laughs> All right, we're looking for it, Nelly. We'll be watching. <laughs> and then we'll cross promote you. <laughs> That's cool. Um, it's got to be some questions out there from others as we flow along here in our conversation. Super cool. Uh, Sunil, do you have any questions? I'm just enjoying listening to you guys. <laughs> wow. Well, it's it's super cool because just any what's your background? What are you studying at school? Um, in terms of uh, us discussing entrepreneurship, maybe that's a good time to kind of jump in there. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, so I am studying business actually right now in school. 
Um, and I think, you know, it's really interesting because I get to see all the different lenses of it, um, financial aspect, but then the marketing and even hearing you guys speak about social media and how, <clears throat> how much marketing has evolved, for example, but at the same time, how at the end of the day, I think the in-person is the one that's the most effective because people trust each other, right? When you hear it from someone that you trust, you're automatically mm-hmm. going to trust their opinion more than seeing it on a post or scrolling somewhere. So um, yeah, that's always been interesting for me. And honestly, entrepreneurship is something I've always considered as well, because I think it's really interesting to take an idea that you have and bring it to life. Um, I love cooking, for example. So I would love to open my own restaurant one day. Um, and just hearing your guys, you know, your stories and how you all started out. And um, it's been really inspiring just to hear about, you know, don't take no for an answer. And sometimes the people who are closest to you can also be your biggest critiques and give you um, advice that you don't necessarily need or want to hear. Um, but yeah, is there anything else that you feel, you know, you could share with the rest of us here at Youth for Change or anyone in the audience? If you have any any words or any pieces of advice um, or something that you've taken away or learned throughout the process? Katie? I think I have, I have a point. Um, just don't be afraid to reach out to people yeah. that you haven't talked to in so long. Like I was amazed by some of the people that wanted to donate or wanted to be involved in our company that, you know, I haven't spoken to in many years or whatnot. And, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and don't be afraid to make those new friendships, relationships, whatnot, mm-hmm. because sure. they will, they will impact your company in more ways than one. Yeah. No. And even, you know, being in business school, the one thing that we learn the most is, you know, it's about who you know, not what you know, and the networking, that whole aspect is so important. And obviously, I learn it from one perspective, but hearing it on the art side, too, and how it's important to keep those connections or even reach out to them. Like, at the end of the day, you know, 90% of people will want to help you. Um, and especially if you're going towards something that's, in your case, especially, you know, helping the broader community at, at large. So um, I think that's a great point to make for sure. Yeah, it's all about those connections and reaching out 100%. to people. Make new looking, friends. I just want to add something. A lot of youth these days, they think that, okay, somebody will come to us and they will give us this, they will give us that. Instead of, they reach to them. Like, youth have yeah. to, you know, if you want something, you go get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, but absolutely. most of the most of the people, they say, oh, I'm a singer now, I'm singing. People mm-hmm. will come and invite me. No, you go 20 places, one person will invite you. Yeah. I, That's how it goes. Yeah. You have you know, to the, fight for it. That, that's a great point. I actually want to add on to that because I have experience with that actually um, when I started doing a little bit of real estate videography and photography and into social media, I remember I would send like maybe, you know, 100 to 200 emails and like call so many real estate agents, right? And and even in the financial business that I do, I would go out and meet a lot of people and get a lot of no's and try to hustle and to see for one yes, right? So yeah, I feel like... um a lot of youth if, if you guys are going into business just go for that keep going and you might not get results right away right and i feel like a lot of the younger generation including myself we want that instant gratification right and that instant results and sometimes it's not going to happen but you just got to keep pushing and got that end goal in your eye in front of your eyes right yeah, I you, have a comment you don't go, somebody there. else will go and get it yeah exactly Exactly. I was going to say, um, one thing I've noticed is even with uh, some of my peers from um, high school and college, like uh, we like the way how we're in touch now, we're, we're in touch from a whole new different way because they have their businesses. I have my business. I have my thing. So we collaborate like that. So it's like it gave my a friendship with some of my friends a whole new perspective in that way. Mm-hmm. And it's all through it's And with me, I've known them for like more than like 10 years now. It's like probably like we're I'm turning 30 this summer. Right. So it's like 30 years pretty much with some of them. And it's like, um, like literally, that's how I see like how networking works. That it's like even with friendships, they go into a whole new perspective when you know someone um, that you know is doing something. And sometimes it's good to, uh, to have a joint hands with the other people. So go together sometimes is more better than going alone. Sometimes. 
Absolutely. Never be afraid to ask for help from anybody too, right? Reaching out to people you know. And that's just networking 101. These are all like excellent points in that. I mean, Katie, I know we can talk about networking a lot for, you know, being in the music theater industry, right? And how that's absolutely necessary to get to know people. Um, and it can be scary at first putting yourself out there, you know, talking to someone and trying to market yourself in a brand new way. Like auditioning in itself is a really kind of, you know, a very intimidating, scary thing, right? Whether it's in auditioning or cold calling, they're very, very similar. And um, when you have that kind of, understanding with someone who you're working with and that's why I think you know you're so blessed to be on melodies to kind of do what you guys do together um you can really kind of work um in a really great way you know and you're you're not limiting each other and you understand each other in a way that you know most might might not so yeah that's really really great and then it's bigger than yourselves actually really beyond melodies right uh, much yeah. more bigger than you and I think that that's where uh, it's going to you know take you yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. That's, that's the beautiful. thing. That's the thing to go in for business, right? If you if you really look at it, you know, find a solution for somebody's problem, and you guys mm -hmm. have really done that and created happiness and joy, and and you're solving a problem, right? And eventually, mm -hmm. that's gonna make you wealthy. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better mm -hmm. though, Renu. Like solving a problem, literally, and, and bringing joy to people. Like I can't imagine just the amount of joy these people might have on their faces, you know, to hear some of the songs they haven't heard and live, right, from no. beautiful singers, right? Like that's gotta be <laughs> so amazing. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty remarkable to what just connection and music can do for these people, for anyone really, and to see it on their faces is just amazing. And mm -hmm. you know, we get emails from staff just going. I had someone's mom in tears come to me and say, like, thank you so much for bringing this entertainment to, you know, my mom or to my sister or whatnot. And it's just amazing the feedback yeah. we're getting. And uh, super uh, lucky. I, I want to know, I wonder what's the, like, the, the positive outcome of health is for that one. Maybe that's a good point that you guys, have you guys used that as a marketing or, like, a, a way of saying, like, you know, that it, it it does improve like yeah, quality of yeah. life absolutely it's kind of in our mandate it's okay. just to like people's lives and mental health you know it's it's so true a little little connection and music can do 100 <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. you know do you mind if i ask could you get an opportunity to sing in another language do you ever get a request to sing in another language? Yeah, actually, you know, we, we do quite frequently. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, now we can, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we go to some homes that are primarily more primarily French speaking, um, just people and so you know we are always expanding bringing out the those italian arias and those french some all these different folk songs um it's it's you know not <laughs> not our forte but we're we're working on it and we're working and expanding that because you know when do they get to hear that live entertainment in their own language like that's amazing yeah yeah, all of that vocal training from Sheridan paying off, right? There we go. Especially with those arias. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. Wow. I know you're cutting out a little bit, but I think I'm feeling your vibe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we know what we know what she's saying. <laughs> I, was saying I was saying we got to get those Italian arias coming out because yeah. we worked very hard on them in Sheridan. Yeah. So. We did. Well, um, <laughs> just sort of tying into teaching international students and newcomers and how important that language learning is and sharing culture and and uh, language across across the arts. Uh, it is beautiful when you bring people together and you're able to um, uh, invoke a memory for a senior and you're singing in another language. Um, you know, for example, the students taught me a really old, old um, Mandarin song um, from mainland China that would have been known for people that are in their 80s, 90s and 100s. And I just thought that was just so super cool. So it's just sort of stuck in my memory and I use it when I can, when I'm meeting someone for the first time in that age range and they absolutely love it. And it's just something as simple as that. 
uh, to retain that one song, uh, but that one song of importance of communication is so cool. Um, it's beautiful and um, I just love it. So I highly recommend it, learning to sing, even yeah. just happy birthday in another language. It just so, um, yeah. it just draws people in. It, it really does, right? So. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Anybody have a birthday coming up? Basically everybody, <laughs> basically everybody have to be focused. They have to know what they want to do in, in their life. Look for the contacts. Ask for everybody, you know, come on, help me, whatever, and we go everywhere, right? These are the mm -hmm. first steps. Every all the youth, they like when, when they want to start their own business, that's what they have to focus on. Focus, plan, execute. Like go anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And also find a purpose too at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For um, anybody that doesn't know, Anya, um, your business actually, um, your entrepreneur background. Yes. So um, with me, uh, I have a background in paralegal studies. I'm currently studying um, a long-term care assistant uh, from Fenshaw College. It's a provincially funded program, which is self-paced with a placement, which I'm looking forward to doing in the next year. Mm -hmm. I've done um, a business uh, during COVID called Care Hangers Thrift Store. And mm -hmm. actually due to the pandemic, I wasn't able to do it like in person, but um, from uh, online through the networks and through where I volunteer, um, there were a lot of uh, families that actually got a lot of their things in time, especially for like newcomers, marginalized communities. Um, it was a social enterprise which supports that, my thrift store. I still do it now, but I don't do it as frequently, but um, it, this um, the purpose of this was to provide um, like, you know, affordable pricing for household items and um, like essential items for families in need. So that was my business that I did. Mm -hmm. And Carla, do you mind if I ask you, for you tying in your skills that you're finishing up uh, teaching right now at um, one of your placements, um, very special experience for you. Uh, could you share with us maybe uh, how important that is for you as an educator moving forward to use those skills that you're learning here in this current placement and reaching someone who's maybe just discovering uh, that part of themselves for the first time? Yeah, well, it, it's really interesting because I, you know, I kind of went over this in our, our podcast the other day too, but mm -hmm. within these students here, I, I've always kind of dealt with students who were um, buyers of like drama course and acting and like they really, really wanted to be there. They were sure of it. They wanted to, um, <clears throat> they wanted to pursue acting as a career, right? Mm -hmm. And so as an educator, as a teacher leading that class, you're kind of you're ready to um, inspire them and they're already inspired and you're just going to keep like building up on that, building up on that. But with this experience that I have now, every single one of my students are shoppers, right? Mm -hmm. They have parents who are telling them that arts and, you know, even entrepreneurship for most of them is not an option. You have to go the typical route. And so my job is not just a drama teacher, but it's really to, like inspire them and like show them that they do have the potential to succeed in anything they put their heart to and like even today we were do like we just did a whole unit on spoken word poetry mm -hmm. and they were reading out loud for the class for the first time and this was like you know the first time some of them had shared anything and it just it almost brought me to tears having them yeah. go around in a circle and reading what they wrote down in some free writing exercises you know, just based off of a few prompts that I gave them, right? And these are students who, when they first entered this course in September, were taking drama because they dropped out of gym class or they dropped out of science or math and it was just the next option. But now they're coming out of it and they're learning something and they're taking from it that's, they're taking something that they're going to hold on to for the rest of their lives, whether they get into acting or not, whether they get into, you know, building a business up for themselves, whatever they get into, they're going to have that confidence kind of instilled in them so that's what's really interesting about this course code and mm -hmm. I'm just taking everything that I've learned about starting my side hustle business for car detailing and then you know learning how to market myself as an artist as well and uh, I just kind of put it all into my work and uh, all of the tools that I've, I've gained at Sheridan College which you know Katie is also so super familiar with <laughs> right mm -hmm. so yeah it, this whole concept of turning these, you know, students who are shoppers into just even recognizing their own potential, right, is like, it's magical to see it unfold in front of you. So, yeah. 
And as you had said, it's mo- emotional too. It is it's emotional. so emotional. I'm just thinking about all their faces right now. And I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm right there with them. So, yeah. And yeah. so they see you as an educator, so surrendering yourself to the moment, uh, surrendering yourself um, raw, if you will, to this experience to learn from them and yeah. their complete vulnerability. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wow, that's, that's beautiful. And how enabling that is as an educator for sure. That's cool. Neat. Um, I don't know where we want to, uh, anybody else want to ask a question? Or? Anybody wants to give good advice to all the people who are watching, who wants to start their own business or whatever? Any advices from all of you guys? Let's do it. Keep pushing, don't stop, don't take no for an answer. You're your own best critic. Don't listen to the haters. Follow your dreams. Um, just every no means another a closer to a next yes. Um, hold mm-hmm. on, I have like two more. Somebody else fill in for me while I come up with the next two. Well, I, I can Rejection add something. Is redirection. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> well, I can also add something on there. Um I think going into entrepreneurship and doing that, I've been doing it since I was a young age, right? Uh, a little bit of background. My parents have a cleaning business and I've been helping them since I was 10 years old. So I really know like the hustle, right? And the, the part of it. So one of the things I think you got to look look into yourself when being an entrepreneur or going to that field of starting a business is you sometimes you got to give away the weekends and, and the partying, right? Uh that's something that's happened to me. I, I have lost friends because of that, right? Because, you know, there might be a party coming up and all your friends want to go, right? But you can't because you had to meet a client and do a sale, right? And because of that, unfortunately, you might lose friends. But, uh, you know, those friends were meant to lose, right? <laughs> you were meant to lose them and you're, you're going to get somebody better. So, you know, especially in that field, if you guys, anybody watching, wanting to go in that, be ready to give away some weekends and some time. But, it's rewarding at the end, right? If you really, if you push it and you're going to have a lot of more free time, right? I think that's the main thing of entrepreneurship that most of us go into is because we don't want to be in that rat race that typically we see our parents in or, or somebody that we know. And can I say, Ravindu, you did not lose friends. You lost boulders. Well, that's true. <laughs> down. It's okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> if they that's can't true. your progression, that means that they weren't worth it. We I'm gonna add, um, <laughs> just wait for everything and don't worry about what anyone says and just like you know dip your hands in, in everything as you do and see how how you grow and how that helps your personal and pro- professional development because you'll meet so many different people you'll get a lot of uh, yes and no's and at the same time you'll meet like all types of people but it's good for you personally and professionally so mm-hmm. that that like on on as a journey as an entrepreneur like that's what you'll see yeah, that's great, Anya. I'll, I'll also just tag on to that. I think um, consistency is key. I think, you know, make sure you're showing up for yourself every single day, even if that means just doing improving it by 1% that day, improve it by 1%. I, I, I always, you know, Jess and Ravindu know this really well, because I talk about this a lot in our podcast, but I relate to everything to the gym lately. And <laughs> a lot of people though, they, you know, that they'll go to the gym for a week and expect to see results right away. And it's just like, that's not how it works. Consistency. You know, you'll see results after five, six months, maybe seven months, eight months, a year, right? That's when you start seeing results. So I would say consistency is key. Make sure that you show up for yourself every single day, stick with it. And there are going to yeah. be days where you don't feel like doing that, but that's- those are the days that matter the most. Exactly. Right. right? Yeah. Especially in, a, in the gym side and the entrepreneur side. Absolutely. So one more thing is I think it's, it's really good to find like a mentor, right? Uh, I know we talked about this in our previous podcast, is to really find a mentor and and learn under them and the mentor you don't even actually need to know them right because there is youtube social media you can just you know find somebody that for example if you're a musician and you see someone that grew up the same way as you you can kind of see what they did and follow their footsteps so that's that's one another recommendation i would give mm-hmm. And so the only uh, thing I would mention there is that learning together, walking together, instead of learning under, I guess. Um, I know that even just in terms of teaching, that's really important that everybody feels on an equal level. Um, so yes, um, if you're on an equal level, you can learn together, grow together, move forward together, and our society moves forward together, right? Um, mm-hmm. Well, this has been very super cool. Uh, we're getting sort of near the end of our program. I, I don't know if anybody wanted to insert anything else before we uh, wrap up and uh, do a shout out for Youth for Change. Uh, 
Anyone else? Nellie and Katie, do you want to plug your social medias one more time for both of your pages? Yeah. Katie, I'll let you go first, just because oh. we're the humanitarian. So go on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's been such a joy chatting with you all today. Thank you for having me and representing Beyond Melodies here. Um, my Our website is www.beyondmelodies.com. <laughs> and our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is just Beyond Melodies Co. And you can also reach us through email, beyondmelodiesco at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay, I'm a little less complicated. She has a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow me at NDO underscore Nelly Lux, and that's on Instagram. I also have my website up, so www.officialNDO. And if you're wondering what NDO stands for, it's no days off. So all you entrepreneurs who are feeling like I am and want to keep hustling to get it, you should probably listen to my music because I do this. <laughs> And, um, and it's .ca. So yeah, stay, and from there, you can also find Snapchat or anything else where I do my little funny videos. I'll eventually get onto TikTok. I'm sorry, guys, for being late, but <laughs> there's still a lot of funny stuff everywhere else. So stay tuned for more, for sure. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. both for being here. This was excellent. Yes. Oh yeah, and shout you guys out too. Thank you guys for having us. Yes. It was a pleasure, no bomb. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And before we head off, we're just doing a shout out for Youth for Change Canada, and be sure to follow us on social media and reach out for and get involved. We would love to have your participation. We've got amazing guests here today and panelists. And again, we wouldn't be here without uh, Suno Channon and the founder of Youth for Change Canada and Moksha Canada Foundation. We have two more days of the festival going on. This is our panel discussion today, which has been very enlightening. Um, so thank you for that. And tomorrow, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be doing uh, musical performances with an eclectic group of performers. Uh, please be sure to join us. Tell your friends about us. Tell your family about us. And make change. Continue to make change in the community and, uh, and be inclusive and welcome everyone at the table. Uh, my name is Lynn McEntee. I've been your moderator for Youth for Change Canada Inclusive Festival 2021. And we're saying goodbye to Ravindu. Bye-bye, Ravindu. Bye-bye, Katie. Bye-bye. Uh, and Jasenia, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much bye. for coming. Bye. You as well. Thank you. And Carla, we'll give you a bye as well. Thanks, everyone. Sunil. And Nelly and Anya has left. So 1,000 thank yous for joining us. Reach out to us on social media. I'd love to hear from you. Bye-bye, everyone.